Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a Honda V6 transmission and how it worked. Now these 5-speed automatic transmissions were notorious for failure. This one's out of a 2006 Acura TL with 200,000 kilometers on it and it's completely shot. Now these also fail a lot in the V6 Accords, Pilots, Odysseys and MDX. Now Honda automatic transmissions are actually kind of like automated manual transmissions in the sense that they use clutches to engage gears on the counter shaft the way a manual transmission would as opposed to using planetary gear sets like regular automatic. Now taking a look around here you can see we've got external accessible transmission pressure solenoids and we've got the shift solenoids out here on the outside which is pretty good it's nice and easy to access you don't have to go into the valve body now at the top here we do have the transmission cooler we've got a speed sensor here and here now this transmission is so old that it uses a dipstick when was the last time you seen one of those on a transmission around the back here we do have an open differential because this is not the type s with the limited slip and a couple more connectors that go down to the bottom first thing i'm going to do is drain this transmission oh no that's too much. All right, I got my baby's onesie here. She won't need that anytime soon. I clean up some of this mess here. Now the previous owner did say the transmission oil was burnt. This looks brand new, which means that they probably tried switching fluids before condemning this transmission. All right, I'm gonna first start by removing all the 10 millimeter bolts to hold these switches and solenoids on. And here's that solenoid housing. You can see there's a small filter inside of there. Here's the other solenoid housing. Just pop off these little switches here. Just gonna remove the transmission cooler. Now one issue with these cars is that there was an overheating condition with third and second gear and a lot of people would upgrade these to an externally mounted transmission cooler. Just pull the transmission cooler housing off. There we go. And it's attached to a hard line over there. Hey Nissan owners, anybody want a dipstick? Let's get the speed sensor out of there. Speed sensor out of here. Oh, I broke it. This here is the transmission fill port. So I flip the transmission on its face. I'm gonna remove some of these electronics. This here is the park neutral switch. It tells the computer what gear you're in, so it knows what to display on the dashboard, but also if you're in drive to not accidentally start it. Now the bolts on the bottom of the car are really rusty, so I'm going to have to give them a quick brush with my brother's toothbrush that I stole, just so I don't strip them out. Let's carefully remove the temp sensor. Now I'm just going to go around and remove all the tens that hold this back cover on. Alright, next up we got to remove these 14 millimeter bolts. Now. Now my half inch gun is actually being repaired under warranty so all I've got is this little guide to take apart this whole transmission. So I'm going to have to do this the old school way. Oh, there's no way that a gun will take this apart. <sighs> these are like head bolts. Alright, now with all those cracked free I'm going to zip out these bolts. Now before the case can come out i got to remove the reverse idler gear which is underneath this cap so we're taking the cap off next. Now inside the casing you can see there's these little tubes here and that's what's going to feed these clutches inside of the counter shaft and you'll see that there's these embedded lines inside of the casting. So here we are inside of this 5 speed automatic you can see this here is the parking pawl that works with the shifter shaft over here that runs the length of the transmission. It's just got this little tooth here that digs into these teeth here and that's all that holds your vehicle from rolling away. So in order to get this case split apart that reverse idler gear over there which operates between the main shaft and the counter shaft needs to be slid out of the way. So we're going to remove these two 12s. Okay, once you pull that pin out, then you can move this gear completely out of the way there. Inside of this transmission, we have the input shaft, which comes from the torque converter. We have the counter shaft and then the secondary shaft. This here is actually the third gear clutch. And typically, this is what goes wrong with these. Now, I don't have the socket to get these nuts off, but luckily my wife got me a gift, an entire socket set. <sighs> Come on, bro. So I was able to steal my brother's Ryobi impact and I was able to get these nuts off. This one here is reverse thread and the other two are normally threaded. Let's see if I can pop up this clutch here. Let's see if I can pop this guy off here. It doesn't immediately smell or look burnt, but it is original. It says 05 on it. Now I can pick off third gear. This is a free spinning gear on its shaft. You can see it's got its needle bearings here. Now these gears are kind of pressed on there. Let's see if I can pop it up. And I was able to pop this one off here. Now the parking pole gear is also splined in there, so let me see if I can get that off. I'm trying the three pie bar method because I don't have screws to go into that puller. There we go. Here we've got the parking pole gear. See, it's got a thrust bearing on it. And then there's ball bearings inside of there that have a little bit of stuff caked on them. Even these ones too have some stuff caked on them. Gotta remove this little ten here to get the tension off of the parking pole. Back this bolt off. And this whole thing can be removed. This is the parking pawl lever. Alright, I need to remove this gear out of the way while I'm pulling the case up. Ok, 
Okay, and here you can see the inner workings of the Honda automatic transmission. Now down at the bottom here you can see we've got the fluid filter which is going to pick up oil from over here. One big design flaw is that these filters are not accessible from the outside. You pretty much have to tear down the whole entire thing in order to change the filter and they will typically get clogged and starve the clutches of oil which would cause transmission slipping. While moving this transmission around I did snap my toothbrush so forgive me for that. Taking a look inside this Honda automatic transmission you can see we've got the input shaft. It's got gears 4 and 5 over here. On the counter shaft we have gears 3 that was pressed down to here before we took off the case and then on the secondary shaft we've got gears 1 and gears 2. Now towards the side here we've got the valve body with its various valves and accumulators that are going to have these pipes over here that drive these clutches to engage and disengage. Now the input shaft is geared to the counter shaft but in order to change directions we have this reverse idler which I had to take off to get the case off. This reverse idler sits in between this gear over here and this free spinning gear over here and just like a manual transmission it's got a fork that moves up and down and it's controlled by the hydraulic solenoids. So once it moves up it's going to engage with this gear over here and then you can have the input going through the idler and then out to the reverse. Now that counter shaft's got a small gear inside of here that drives the final drive which is the differential. This is a simple open differential but if you want to learn how these work I do have another video linked above. Okay, I'm going to pop off this filter. Looks like we're going to have to remove this reverse arm here. And blow this guy up. All the bolts are blocking each other here. Alright, we're going old school. We gotta take third gear off. Just like that. And the arm. Then you can get the filter bolt. And then I can take the filter out, which has a whole bunch of oil, and I don't have an oil pan at the bottom. Here. Bro, I need the oil pan. Where are you? Okay, I got this baking pan from the kitchen. I'm just gonna put that under the table. Alright, let's try that again. Oh, it's a lot of oil. Okay, I think I got it here. So if you take a look at how this transmission works, it's actually similar to a manual transmission, but instead of having selector forks like this one for reverse, we have clutches that can lock up the free spinning gear. So on the input shaft here, we've got fifth gear. Power is going to come in over here. We lock up that clutch. It's then going to be transferred over to a smaller gear over here on the counter shaft and then be fed down to the final drive, which is way down at the bottom here. And that's going to give you a really nice overdrive ratio. Now looking at fourth gear in between here, you'll see you've got the bottom clutch. If we lock that up, you'll have a larger gear driving a small gear. Again, that's giving you a nice speed increase, which in turn is then going to drive the final drive. Now looking at third gear here, we've got this clutch on top of this free spinning gear. Once we lock up this clutch here, the driving gear from the input shaft is now going to transfer torque over to this gear here which in turn is going to turn the counter shaft and the final drive. You'll notice that the gear ratio between these are roughly one to one. Now first and second gear are hanging out over here on the secondary shaft. Now the secondary shaft gets its power through the third gear from the input over here. This is free spinning and that's how it will turn the secondary shaft. So even if these clutches are not engaged this shaft is always rotating. Now if you engage the first gear clutch over here that shaft is then going to be locking this little tiny gear at the bottom here to this larger gear to give you a nice torque multiplication and then once again drive the final drive. Similarly for second gear if we lock up this clutch here power from the secondary shaft is going to lock up this gear over here which in turn is going to drive this one on the counter shaft and then out to the final drive. Let's go through the power flow diagram for second gear. So we've got the engine that's going to spin the input shaft through the torque converter and bring power out to this gear at the end here which is going to come through third gear which is free spinning. That's then going to power the secondary counter shaft. Now the secondary shaft is splined to this clutch so once you engage the clutch here the clutch and the gear are going to lock together. That gear is then going to transfer torque back up to the counter shaft over here which has got a fixed gear on it and that's going to drive the counter shaft and send torque down to the wheels to the final drive. Now for reverse gear you'll see that it's a small gear that drives a small gear that drives a larger gear and its gear ratio is very similar to first gear. Now this I think is actually a very simple but unique design is all because Honda wanted to be different and basically automate a manual transmission. Now, I do have another video on how the hybrid version of this transmission works you might want to check that out linked above. All right, we're going to disassemble this thing now so we can get to the valve body and inspect all of these components for wear. How much splines are on there? Can you imagine machining this? Take off this selector fork. This one's got to come out first. Yeah, there you come out. Here we have the valve body. It sits basically upright inside the transmission. Don't really notice any signs of failure. There's not too much deposits or anything in here or clutch material. And the fluid is brand new. Now right, we're going to pop off this accumulator assembly here. This is the piston that controls the fork for reverse. Here we've got the accumulator assembly. Right, we're going to knock a couple more bolts off here. 
anybody wants to send me a mallet, that would be nice. Just take out more bolts and see what happens. See if we can take off this valve body here and the shifter lever. At the bottom here we have the oil pump where fluid is just going to flow between these gears here. It's driven off of the input shaft of the transmission. We can pull this out here. And then it could pull off the shim here. And you see the rest of the valve body is actually machined inside of the casing. All right, so just drain this transmission into this perfectly placed hole down below. So here we've got this five speed automatic transmission all taken apart here. Let's open it up to see what we can find. All right, so here we've got all the clutches and the three shafts. I'm gonna start taking apart these clutches to see if we can see any damage. I'm gonna start with the third clutch because I heard this is the one that usually burns up very commonly on these. Now off camera, I've got my wife's jeans because at this point in the teardown, things are gonna get really, really oily. Pop this out. It doesn't look burned to me, but inside of here you can see this is the piston. It's going to take fluid from this little oil hole inside of here, pressurize that piston and push it up against that snap ring in order to pressurize and engage this clutch. As for the clutch itself, it actually looks really new. I feel like this transmission was rebuilt very recently at some point. Now the way these clutches work is there's an alternate of bands between steels and friction discs. The steel ones are splined to the outside, which in turn is splined to the inside housing here, which in turn is splined to the shaft. Meanwhile, the friction discs over here are internally splined, and that's what's actually splined to the gear that's free spinning on the shaft. Now, because these gears are physically engaged with the other gears on the other shaft at each time, they're always going to be spinning depending on what gear you're in. So you're always going to have a clutch that's slipping, where the internal teeth are always following the gear speed, and the external teeth are following the shaft speed. Now, that of course is rather inefficient because you've got a very tiny gap where the sheer friction in between here is just with the fluid itself as it's slipping along and if you combine that with you know five or six different clutches in here you do have quite a lot of losses in this transmission compare that to an actual manual transmission where you have a shifter fork that moves in and out with a synchronizer well the forks just sitting there in neutral most of the time so it's not taking up extra horsepower that this does all right let's move on to fourth and fifth gear here pop out the snap ring and i can remove the clutch actually everything else will be removed and you can see that its friction discs are actually in pretty good condition as well. This transmission was definitely rebuilt or low mileage. And now I'm going to pull out the shaft here, which is the main shaft. And you can see these are the roller bearings here that the gears roll against because they're free spinning. Here's the actual gear here. Take that out. These splines here are what's flying to the clutch itself. And then this here is the actual gear that transmits torque. Now you can see this one here has got thrust bearings. That's because you've got a helical cut to the gear here and that's going to create some axial forces and that's why you need these needle bearings. Let's take out fifth gear clutch here. This up. And again, these clutches look perfect. Now taking a look inside here, you can see there's actually these small little holes and that's how fluid is transmitted to this piston. Now there's a piston over on this side for fifth gear and one over here on this side for fourth gear that's going to press up against the clutches and that's activated through these little holes over here as fluid is carried through this shaft. All right, here we are with second gear. This one was also a very common clutch to fail. Let's take out the snap ring. And I'll show you. So we'll take out first gear over here. This one's got two clutches on the inside here. And let's see what the second gear clutches look like. All right, taking a look at second gear here, you can see that the friction disc himself actually didn't wear out, but more of the steel band. You can see this here has so much discoloration on it. If you compare that to the steel from the previous gear here, that's how it should look like versus all of that discoloration. Now that tells you two things. Number one, this clutch was overheated at some point, and that's either due to a lack of lubrication or a starvation of oil, or number two, that the clutch was always being applied and forced against something, and it was forced to slip. And that could be due to a defect in the valve body or the control system. Now, Honda did go through a recall phase where they installed oil spray jets that would cool down this clutch and not cause it to overheat. That did help until at least the warranty expired and then you'd be off your own rebuilding your transmission. Now, the first gear has actually got two clutches. There's one down at the bottom there and one over here. And that corresponds to these two here. The smaller one of which is your first gear. You can see that's going to move that. The one over here is actually a, a one-way clutch. So if you move it in this direction, it freewheels. But if you move it in this direction, it carries the first gear with it. This is kind of like the rear sprag on your bicycle. It allows you to drive the gear in one direction, but freewheel in the other direction. Now, the reason they do this is because of engine braking. Now, if you put your transmission down in low gear, instead of the transmission through this counter shaft driving the final drive through this over here, instead the power is going to come from the wheels through this gear and power the actual counter shaft and that's what's going to slow the engine down. So what you do is lock up this clutch over here and the first gear clutch and this all becomes one unit and rotates and that's what's going to transfer that power to help you control your vehicle on downhills a little bit better. I'll take a look at this clutch here. First gear. Take this guy off. And both of the clutch sets come out. You can see this is the smaller one which is the actual first gear clutch. 
yeah compare it to fifth gear here you'll see that the clutches are a little bit more on the darker side which does make sense first gear is used more than say fourth or fifth and now if we compare that to the lock up you can see again this is a little bit more on the darker side but it's not completely burned there's a little burn spot over here actually that's weird now while I've seen transmissions that have been completely smoked, you can check the link above to see those teardowns. I wouldn't think that this one completely failed, although second gear is looking in pretty sad shape. It's really sad though that Honda had this problem across all of their V6 models from mid 2000s way back to the 90s. I really hope though that they've solved those with the latest 6 speed and the 9 speed transmissions. Now in order to control all of those clutches, we have the valve body which is like the brains of the transmission. The top part here we have the accumulator assembly and this is basically like giant tanks inside here that hold oil pressure and they'll slowly release it to slowly engage those clutches so that you have a nice smooth shift and these are all computer controlled through those valves that we took off on the outside of the transmission in the beginning next up we've got the servo body which has a giant plunger on it that had the shifter fork sitting on here that engages reverse and the shifter fork just like manual transmissions just moves up and down except it's controlled hydraulically you can see I can pop out this piston over here. All it's got to do is build up some of that oil pressure and send it up when you select like the reverse gear. Next up we have the regulator body. Now it's got the spring on here and as oil pressure builds up it's going to start to regulate that so you have the perfect amount of oil pressure and inside of here you can see the valves that have to switch back and forth. Next up we've got this little arm that sits inside of here which actually plugs into the torque converter as the stator. Below that we have the shim here and you can see there's like a tiny little filter inside of here. You can imagine if that gets clogged you're going to have a lot of problems because it's going to cause basically a heart attack. It's going to cause a cloggage inside of one of these arteries here. Now you've also got the manual valve over here but now what's interesting is if I flip this valve body over you can see this is basically the heart of the brain of the transmission which is the oil pump. Essentially this is going to provide the correct oil pressure to the hydraulic circuitry inside of here moving the correct valves either electronically or manually to shift into the correct gear. I'm gonna do another off-camera hand wipe here. I have no idea how she used to fit into these. Now we come to the reason why these transmissions failed, and that's because of a lack of filtration and of lack of cooling. Now one thing that could help is getting a bigger transmission cooler. You can see this is just some tiny little heat exchanger. Now if you run these out to a radiator at the front there, you could cool it down a little bit better, or better yet, if you take the fluid out to the front of the radiator and have an external cooler, that would definitely help. Now because these filters are not really accessible, having an inline filter over here in your cooling system that you can externally access would be ideal. You guys think my little cordless grinder will cut through this? Let's see. This is what it's made of? It's just paper. Yeah, this looks pretty messed up to me. This thing looks pretty clogged. It's just a stiff piece of construction paper to me. I don't think oil is going to travel inside of here. It's just so sad that you got to drop the subframe, remove the transmission, and split the transmission casing in order to service this thing. I don't think I'm going to drive a V6 Honda automatic anymore. And that's a teardown of the 5-speed automatic transmission from Honda and why they fail. Now, if you don't want these clutches to burn out on you, I suggest you look into a transmission cooler that's externally mounted because there's not a lot you could do with this inherent design flaw. Oh yeah, make sure you check and change your transmission fluid very often. This one actually has a dipstick, so and there's no excuse. You could also just stay out of second and third gear and just keep coasting on the highway in fourth and fifth. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.